groovy ride. Want a lift? Hey! Okay, dude, let's see what that jalopy can do. What's a jalopy? <laughs> First off the line. Yeah, I'm sure they're feeling pretty silly right now. Hey guys, Zach Mars here and welcome back to Megas Month. So today's episode, Viva's Las Vegas, is first and foremost, the name is just fun. So, um, uh, so if you guys don't know, there's a Elvis Presley song and a movie called Viva Las Vegas and that is what uh, this episode, this episode's name is referring to. It is in fact a reference to that, or it is in fact a reference to both of those things. So, uh, yeah, first and foremost, we're starting it off on a pun, which I uh, obviously kind of fun. But, uh, in any case, um, this episode, sure enough, is centered around the city of Las Vegas in Nevada, which, uh, I have never personally been to, but, uh, I've been told it is like, it has a lot of, it's a very, uh, well, basically it's where people go to just kind of, it's, it is the gambling center of the world, basically, is what it is. Um, it, it is the, it is the place where you can literally go to Vegas, um, and, and there are a lot of different things in Vegas that you can do. You can gamble, you can, you can go to video game conventions, you can go to a bunch of other things. It is a very, it is a very big commerce heavy city, I will mention that. I've never, again, I've never been there, but uh, that's what I've been told. But, uh, in case as we find, and, but in case as we find out, um, Coop is actually on his way to, Ma is on his way to Vegas in Vegas, and, uh, and of course, and, and of course, he, he and J he, Jamie and Keeper are, are are excited are going to go over to to to, to Las Vegas, and uh, Coop and Jamie are both very excited to be able to go to Vegas and uh, point out and point out that they can't that they can't wait to go there because uh, he because because Coop, as Coop mentions, he's actually going to be starting going into a, into a video game competition to actually get start to actually uh, kind of kind of prove it, prove his rank in the, against the world and that he's been practicing all week for that and. Uh, Jamie's just excited to just excited to see all the showgirls in action, which uh, uh, of course it makes perfect sense for for Jamie to say something like that. Whereas uh, Kiva admits she doesn't, she's never had the opportunity to actually go to Vegas, and uh, and when and when and when Coop and Jamie just kind of look at her and ask how that's how that's even possible, um, she she then proceeds to remark that uh, unfortunately, and this is kind of sad. Um, the Glorfs actually started their invasion 13 years before they were born, and before she was born. And the first thing that, and the first city that they actually destroyed in their display of power was unfortunately Las Vegas. So, uh, yeah, unfortunately, so unfortunately, yeah, Kiva was never able to actually go to like go. She was never able to actually go to Vegas because it was destroyed by the time she by the time she was born. So, uh, yeah, she never got to got to ex go experience it, and. Uh, for that reason, is is equally excited as the boys to actually be going to be able to finally get the opportunity to go to Las Vegas because uh, she never got she never got the chance to because it had been do been done long before she she was even around and uh, and of course and of course Coop points out Coop and Jamie point out that it is actually the one of the one of the best places to go in the world and uh, explain that you can do that you can do anything in Vegas and uh, sure enough the two the two boys then proceed to go into completely different visions about what they what they think Vegas is like um obviously Jamie thinks about winning it big on one of the on one of the slot machines and getting a lot of money while uh Coop imagines doing imagines eating um a lot eating a lot of great food at the at all of the different uh buffets and all and and doing and playing a lot of video games and uh both of those things are technically true but uh but of course, but of course, Ki but of course, Kiva then proceeds to point out that uh, obviously the, the, she points out the very obvious fact that they probably should have been there by now, and points out that uh, where she is is currently not next to nothing, and uh, even pulls that up on her computer and, and to show Coop. But uh, Coop then proceeds to point out, them to point out that her navigation system might be wrong, and that his now and that he knows where Vegas is. But uh, of course, what we quickly find out is that he doesn't even know where Vegas is. Um, as the as we find out, Coop uh, Coop just kind of. Well, drags his head, drags his crew into the middle of nowhere, and uh, and I, I'm the only thing that they can find is an aban is a seemingly abandoned gas station, and uh, and of course this causes this causes um j this causes Jamie to, to remark that maybe his navigation system isn't as robust as he thinks it is, which of course he's just referring to his brain, but uh, of course, but of course Coop that, but of course Coop takes to Coop looks takes one look around with Megas and uh. And, and tries to call for service, but uh, of course, but of course, the, the sense is abandoned. He can't find anything, and uh, in frustration, he winds up kicking over one of the gas, one of the uh, what is it, one of the gas dispensers, which uh, is revealed to actually be a switch. 
And sure enough, as soon as Megas kicks it over, um, the, the whole thing winds up going down through a trapdoor and onto an elevator. And uh, with, with, no, with, with nobody fully understanding where the hell they are. And uh, sure enough, they wind up in this giant underground base that uh, admittedly isn't supposed to be there. And Kiva even points out that, uh, it, that, it's, that it's not supposed to be there when she goes to go analyzing it. But uh, also points out that it's several years old and seems abandoned. And, uh, and of course point out that they're going to have to figure out a way to get out. At which point uh, Coop immediately realizes that he immediately goes for back to, tries to go back the same way he came in. He immediately flies up to the door to the door that closed behind him and uh, tries to open it with both brute force and several of Magus' weapons. But, uh, of course, that doesn't wind up working. At one point, he even goes back into the base to grab an eye beam to kind of pry the, pry the door open. But, uh, it, it doesn't wind up working. He just winds, it just winds up getting getting stuck in, and, and Megas just kind of struggles to open the door with no avail. At which point, at which point, Kiva finally tells Coop that, uh, he, that, 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 that's a reinforced door designed to withstand a nuclear blast and that there's no way he's getting it open. Um, at which point, Coop remarks that apparently he, he can't actually test that theory. Because, uh, as it turns out, and, uh, it's not explained how or why, but Coop, for whatever reason, ha- Megas just has a nuke, and it's not even really explained where Coop got it, or why he has it, but, uh, it's revealed that Coop just has a nuke for some reason, and, uh, and while he- and while he's not allowed to use it for very obvious reasons, um, and- and, and of course, Jamie is actually shaking like a leaf in his seat, because of which- kind of confirms the fact that yes this is indeed makes his most powerful weapon and of course is in fact the, is in fact a weapon that is too dangerous to actually use especially in a close space um Kiva eventually dissuades Coop from using it telling him that they're obviously not going out the same way they came in and and so that they need to look for another exit and uh and of course Jamie is obviously shaking like a leaf so uh just make a mental note of that Coop just has a nuke that just casually for fun he has a nuke I don't know where he got it, but he has one. But, uh, and yeah, and even Koopa's just like, what's the point of having a nuke if I'm not allowed to use it? And, uh, there's a very good reason why he's not allowed to use it. Everybody knows what a nuke is, what it does. No, he, he's not allowed to use that. He, I, I can, and, and now I'm just imagining him accidentally setting that off in the middle of a battle and just killing everyone. I'm just imagining that, because that's what, that's something Koopa would canonically do. That's something he would absolutely do by accident. I, 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 I kid you not. He's been established to be a little bit clumsy. I got a feeling he's eventually going to f forget that there's that there's a, that one of his buttons that launches a nuke and he's just going to... I mean, I, I don't think it'll ever come up in the series again because obviously this is a kid's show. They're not allowed to show those kinds of, those kinds of things. But uh, I'm just imagining off screen, Coop, would ju Coop just accidentally fires his nuke at an unsuspecting planet and, bl and just radiates the hell out of it. I'm, that's just what I'm imagining would actually happen. But, uh, in any case, a little tension aside, Coop then decides to actually start poking around and, uh, wonders what exactly the, what exactly this place is, and, uh, especially since they, he can't go out the same way he came in and needs to find another exit. And, uh, and sure enough, they start scan- they start- they start looking for- for another way to get out, and, uh, and of course, Jay, and of course, Jamie remarks that they should- they, they really shouldn't be there- be there, and points out that, uh, and of course, it feels like there's something there that, that it feels like uh, whatever is there. It's uh, there's obviously something. Obviously, he uh, points out that obviously something happened, and hopefully they were, and hopefully and very thankfully they weren't around to actually see what it was. And uh, and but of course, Coop eventually finds a reinforced door that he struggles to get open at first. He actually tries to puts all of his for all of his force behind trying to pull the door open with Magus, but uh, all he really just succeeds in doing is ripping the handle off. And. Uh, and of course, this one. And of course, this winds up. This only further determines Coop and, uh, and who, who that, who, and, and Jamie. Even, and even though Jamie and Kiva both point out that uh, that they probably shouldn't go through that, go through whatever that door is, since uh, obviously, since obviously, whatever it is, they're not going to be getting it open. And uh, and of course, and of course, and, and of course, Kiva even remarks that they, that Coop should probably approach it with a little bit of caution. But uh, Coop kind of ignores her, pointing out that everything that the place is dead and that there's nothing there that he could actually disturb if there even is something here. And, and then proceeds to actually punch the door to successfully break the door open, only to discover that the room that he was trying to get into was airtight and just sucks every and just sucks Megas in alongside all of the air that is just suddenly has to rush in to fill this vacuum vacuum space that was that was behind the door coop open and uh and eventually the door does wind up close the door does eventually reclose itself but uh 
But at, at, at which point Coop utters an apology to 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 Kiva and, and Jamie, pointing out that uh, he didn't know that the room was airtight and he didn't even pl and he didn't really plan any of that. Um, at which point Coop re Coop reactivates Megas' headlights, and uh, it's at this point where Jamie is finally able to get a good look around and uh, figures out what exactly it is that where they are. Um, as it turn as it turns out, they're actually in Area 50. Where, and uh, when Ki and when Kiva and, and when Kiva asks, asks K Jamie to explain, um, but, and this is and this is in a very obvious parody, by the way. But uh, Area 50, as, as Jamie explains, is this top secret military project base where they where they confiscate a bunch of alien weapons and then re -eng reverse engineer them with human technology to make new weapons. And uh, sure and, and sure enough, the place is just littered with old with old with old alien crap. It's covered. It's filled with oh, it's filled with old UFOs, weapon other weaponry, and a whole bunch of other and a whole bunch of other discarded technology that uh, clearly hasn't been seen that been you been put into use for a very long time. There's just tank. There's tanks. There's air fighters. There's a whole bunch of other things surrounding the surrounding the place. And uh, and of course, and of course, this is this point where Kiva then asks how Jamie actually knows about all of this if it's so top secret. And uh, Jamie and Jamie just remarks that uh, that obviously because Area 50 that he just explains that he saw it on TV and that there were a lot of documentaries about it. And though although nobody could actually prove that it existed until now. And uh, and of course, Coop, and of course, Coop, of course, Coop then proceeds to point out that uh, that's probably all just stories, and that there's probably nothing down here that's actually worth worrying about. And uh, sure enough, continues to actually poke us, poke around, poke around a little bit to actually look for, to actually look for things. And uh, eventually, it finds a door labeled R E C R, or just Wrecker, as I'm going to call, as I'm going to shorten it to. And uh, and of course, Coop then 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 points out that that seems like that seems promising, and tries to open the door. Um, although Jamie points out that, the, that that's probably a bad idea because again, military weapons, um, old old alien technology could be something dangerous behind the door. And uh, and, and of course, but of course, Co Coop once again points out that it's probably j that there's probably nothing down here any regardless. And uh, proceeds to open the proceeds to actually open the door, and then and then what they discover is actually an old robot called the called the Wrecker, which. Uh, of course, which of course is an a acronym, but uh, the record is, is this is this interesting little robot that uh, looks kind of looks like a series of other things put of other things just put together, and uh, and, and it does kind of look like a mix of alien technology and uh, re and uh, and military tech, but uh, and. Uh, and Coop even remarks that the record isn't doesn't seem to actually be working, and uh, and uh, and even points out that that Jamie had nothing to be scared of since it's since it's, as Coop puts it, it's nothing but a little junk bot, and uh, proceed and proceeds to actually kick it, which causes a spark to fly between Megas and the robot, and uh, of course and of course Coop points out that satisfied that there's nothing there, then proceeds to get right to go to go out and leave and look for another exit. Only for the record to suddenly get up and uh, declare and declare that it that it now has power and that uh, it can now complete its programming. Um, which of course, and of course at this point then proceeds to attack Magus and uh, and Coop then proceed then points out that uh, it doesn't know what the what the robot's deal is, but it picked the wrong fight and uh, immediately tries to go and attack and attack the record, but uh, only only for the only for the record to actually grab it to actually grab him back and. Uh, and what and what Kiva quickly discovers is that uh, fighting the record directly is actually a really bad idea because as established as established when Coop kicked it earlier and more so when he tries to fight it, the record has the ability to absorb electricity, which mean which to, in order to power itself, which uh, basically means that uh, for for every extended moment that uh, Coop is actually in contact with it, it's slowly sapping Megas's power and is current in, to in order to fuel itself and. Uh, and sure, and, and and of course, Kiva points out that they need to figure out another way to actually defeat it. So, uh, Coop instead decides to actually. Coop instead points out that uh, he he has he knows that he has the robot exactly where he wants him, and then proceeds to actually charge at it, only for the record to actually disassemble itself, which uh, is actually kind of reminiscent of uh, what is it the trans the Transformers, specifically the Constructicons that uh, are able to just reform themselves and piece themselves together and that kind of thing. Um, it, it's, it's a really interesting, it's a really interesting concept in, in the story, actually, but, uh, the Wrecker uses it to actually evade, in here, to actually evade Megas' attacks, and, uh, and of course, Coop actually winds up falling for this trick several times, and is unable to actually keep, get a good, get a close attack on it, and, uh, eventually the Wrecker, and eventually the Wrecker proceed, uh, is able to actually take down Megas in this way by actually re reforming behind it and then attacking it, which causes Megas to just kind of fall over and, un and be unable to move, and, uh, it's at this point where the record prepares to, act, to prepares to actually finish Megas off, only to discover that it doesn't have enough power, 
and uh, doesn't have enough power to actually destroy it. So uh, it concludes that it concludes that it'll it'll let Megas go for now, and then proceeds to leave. It then proceeds to leave and lock Megas in the room where it where it was held prisoner, claiming that it'll be locked away just as it was. But uh, and if, but of course and of course this causes this causes ever this causes the group to actually wonder what exactly it is that, that's referring to to complete its programming. And uh, and, and it does mention it several times, but. Uh, then proceeds to, but then proceeds to actually rewinds the tape deck on its, on its belly button, which to actually and it reveals that what it, what it actually believes to be its enemy, and uh, it basically just declares that everything is its enemy, which is problematic. And, uh, and but of course it also points out that uh, that its power is insufficient and that it'll be unable to actually complete its programming. At which point Kiva comes up with a really brilliant idea, which is that. Uh, the only way to actually defeat the Wrecker seems to be to just let its power eventually run dry so that it's unable to actually fight back. And uh, Coop then proceeds to then decides to actually gloat it, gloat at it by pointing out that uh, that that that's e that that's very easy and that the only thing that the only thing within a hundred miles that it could actually sap the sap electricity from is Las Vegas. And uh, this causes the record to actually go through its records and uh, and, and figure out where and figure out where Las Vegas actually is in relation to where it is. And then decides to actually take Coop's up off offer offer on that and proceeds and proceeds to leave to go drain Las Vegas, which uh of course because and which of course becomes a very big problem because a because a, according to a according to Coop the the record is not going to ruin his convention in that and that's going to absolutely cause problems and uh, b uh the, if the if the record is successful in draining Las Las Vegas according to Kiva it will eventually destroy the world and uh. And, and of course, pointing out that, that the bolt, bolt with both of them realizing that that's bad, um, Coop then decides to actually try and figure out a way to actually get out. And uh, the main way he actually decides to do this is by smashing up the smashing up the door where he came in, which uh, has limited success, I should mention. And uh, and while he's trying to do this, the the record does eventually find its way to Las Vegas and starts smashing up the place. And uh, and and, and funnily enough, Goat Goat and uh, Goat and Georgie, who, who are they they're both here for some reason. And uh, as we find out, they're actually there to actually play a play, play a game called Volleyball Babes Six Thousand, which uh, is a very reference to, is a very obvious reference to uh, to what is it um to uh, Dead or Alive. Um, if you've never played the Dead or Alive series, they're basically, they're basically a, well, specifically the volleyball spinoff of it, but, uh, basically the Dead or Alive volleyball spinoff of, of it is, uh, is, it's just an excuse to see hot girls play, vo play volleyball, and, in, in that's basically what this, what the whole, what the whole selling point of that, of that, vo of the volleyball games are. That's it. It's just, it takes the girls from the Dead or Alive series, puts them in a volleyball game, and that's it. The, the, that's basically the whole selling point, and, uh, Granted, it's a very good one, but uh, it's still it's. It, it, I've never played Dead or Alive, but I, but I've but I've heard good things about it. I I may check it out at some point. But uh, in case, but in case uh, but in case they also but in case as George uh, but in case George is excited because he's been practicing the game for a long time, whereas uh, whereas Go makes makes a remark about uh, how it may, how the new engine makes the makes certain assets pop, and uh, and, and while he specifically mentions the background, the way he hesitates implies that he's talking about the girls themselves and uh and that's completely in Go within goat's character it makes perfect sense for him to combat something like that it's funny and it makes sense but uh but in case but in case they'd also wonder where coop is since uh obviously they know he's not going to miss a gaming convention and then uh and then when the wrecker shows up and starts wrecking things um they, somebody mentions that a giant robot is destroying everything and uh go and goat and, and goat and georgie then conclude that that's probably him and and, and of course it's not him we know this but uh but of course, this is all. This is all while Coop is still trying to punch his way out of the vault where he's stuck, and uh, and and, he, and of course, Kiva eventually tells him to give up, pointing out that the door is actually impenetrable. But uh, of course, Coop no ignores her, pointing out that it just, that he's almost got it. And uh, sure enough, he does eventually knock down the door. But then several more just close in its place, and uh, and Coop then then just proceeds to parrot what Kiva, what Kiva literally just said five seconds ago. And uh, and and of course, he and of course, realizing that he's not going to be able to find a way out that way. Um, they actually start looking around, looking for other, looking for other ways to get out. And uh, in the process, notice a little plaque on the wall that uh, it, that, that reveals what the what the record is actually an acronym for. And uh, sure enough, 
And sure enough, as Jamie, as Jamie reads it, he quickly realizes that uh, yes, the Wrecker is indeed a reverse-engineered. Basically, the basically the name it has contains reverse-engineered in, in its in its title, which uh, of which of course Jamie re immediately realizes is in relation to the fact that it was reverse-engineered from Alien Tech, and uh, and does and even tells Co tells Coop a quick "I told you so," and uh, Coop does finally agree does finally agree that that, that, that is indeed a problem, but. Uh, then, then decides that he actually does need to actually find a way out of the out of the base, and uh, and eventually and eventually just starts punching walls because there's no other way out. And uh, and Kiva does conclude does conclude that the wall that he, that Coop's currently punching is indeed a perfect way out, and that uh, the way and that as as there seems to be another room on the other side, and uh, and so and so Coop at, at her advisory just keeps punching through the wall. Only to discover that he accidentally hits the main support beam for the for the whole for the whole part of the complex that he's in, and Akuba has to kind of duck and cover duck and cover with Magus to kind of get out of the way of all the of the now falling rubble, and uh, this causes them to wind up in another much bigger room, um, which with Koopa remarking that it actually ha doesn't seem to have any sort of door and wonders why it doesn't have a door, but of course and of course and eventually what we find out is that uh, Koopa's actually managed to find his way inside a missile silo. And that, uh, and, and Kiva concludes that that, that, that might be, that, that it is indeed a missile silo and that there's likely a way out. And, uh, Coop concluding that that sounds like an exit, then proceeds to fly through the top of the, of the missile silo at full power. And, uh, and then proceeds to fly off to Las, Ve to Las Vegas to actually go in, to actually go and stop the wrecker. Although, Kiva makes a remark about how they should probably find, probably find a way to actually rehide Area, fi Area 50. Pointing out that somebody could very easily st stumble upon it, but uh, as it turns out, as G as if we quickly find out several seconds later, that isn't apparently isn't entirely a problem because uh, apparently I don't I'm not entirely sure what happened, but I think but I think because Coop me messed up the structural st stability of the building, it caused the missile inside the missile silo to go off and took the whole base with it. And uh, Jamie concludes that that's likely not going to be a problem anymore. Um, at which point, Coop then proceeds to show up at the Las Vegas, as the Wrecker is actually in the process of actually dra draining a, uh, compute, a, um, the video game competition, um, the video game, um, co convention center, and, uh, and of course, Coop then proceeds to show up and tell, and tells it to lay off the video games, but, uh, and the Wrecker then, then merely remarks that it's here, that it's here to finish its mission, and, uh, and Coop, and Coop then proceeds to get ready to go in for a fight, go in for a fight, and try, and gets ready to face off against the Wrecker, um, only to, and 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 does indeed try to go in for another punch, but uh, the record then proceeds to just kind of separate itself again. Although Coop has wisened up and quickly realizes that 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 is trying to bait him into attack again, and uh, concludes that he's not going to fall for that. Um, only for the record to reveal that that was only that it was actually putting a practical pr purpose behind why it can break up. And uh, what we find out is that uh, while the main body is styled after a UFO and enables it to fly around. Um, the other four, the other four parts of its body can turn into a series of tanks and and jet fighter jets that then proceed to farm Magus with weapons and missiles. And uh, and Coop eventually does and Coop does defend himself decently well, but uh, the record does eventually can declare that uh, Coop isn't going to be able to defeat it because it, its purpose is to destroy everything and in order to protect everything. And uh, he declares that he is an enemy and that uh, if, and that all en all enemies must be destroyed. And uh, and of course, this is, and of course, all of these, all of its comments do do prompt Jamie to kind of point out that there's probably a good reason why the why the military scrapped this thing. Um, point, was pointing out and kind of insulting Coop in the process that uh, it's more messed up than Coop is, in which uh, Coop takes offense to, but does it, but does ultimately agree to. But uh, in any case, Coop then proceeds to actually kind of fight back against the robot who has since reassembled itself, and uh, and, and while he does and he does wind up uh, fighting fighting off against facing off against the wrecker and knocking it around knocking around a bit, um, the wrecker does eventually not push him back and and starts wail, and starts wailing on him to try and starts absorbing his electricity, and uh, and Coop is unable to actually move because because he's stuck. Um, and also, funnily enough, while the while the wrecker and uh, while the wrecker and Vegas are actually fighting, um, two guy two guys who are who are there to, they're in Vegas decide to bet on Coop to actually win the fight, which is fun, which is funny. And uh, or at least one of them does. The other one votes on the on um, on bets on the wrecker, and they bet fifty bucks. And uh, and of course, one of them hauls out to Coop to beat the, to beat the sucker because he's betting on it. But uh. And, uh, but uh, but eventually Coop, Coop does want to be in quarter by the wrecker and uh, quickly realizes and Coop, Kiva points out that he needs to get out of range of it or, or and not let it touch him, which uh, Coop quickly points out that he knows full well he needs to do. Um, 
But and of course, then proceeds to pull pull Magnus into reverse, and uh, why and winds up getting out of range of the wrecker. But he also winds up smashing up the best buffet in town, as we find out it's the cheapest buffet in town, and that's why Coop why Coop is very upset about the fact that it got wrecked. But uh, and then proceeds to get and then proceeds to get up, dust Magnus off, and then goes into his trash talk about how uh. He doesn't about how the record record locked him in a vault, is destroying Las Vegas and his kit in his gaming and his gaming center, and more specifically, just destroy just caused him to destroy the best buffet in town. And then Pro points out that that he get that uh, the, the, rec the record is has gambled and lost and he's going to take him down. And uh JP points out that that was probably one of Coop's best trash talks yet. And uh, and of course and for good reason. Coop made up Coop made a very Vegas themed trash talk and that's very and that's very fit very funny and uh of course, Coop even points out that he had been working on it, but, uh, and of course, then proceeds to get ready to actually go and fight the wrecker, but, uh, Kiva points out the very obvious problem and that they're not going to be able to defeat it because it's just constantly sapping electricity from Vegas, and, uh, and of course, they point out that, and of course, points out that they're going to need to find a, find a way to actually keep the wrecker from actually absorbing all of the, all of the things around, around Vegas in order, and stop powering itself, at which point, uh, Coop eventually, Coop eventually does indeed figure out how to do that, which is to attack the main power source, which, uh, which as it turns out, and I've never been to Vegas, so I had no, so I have no idea if this is true or not, but, uh, as it turns out, um, he quickly find he quickly finds the, the dam that actually powers the, the, the nearby Las Vegas, and, uh, and Kiva tells him to actually be very gentle and not break it too thoroughly because uh, they only need to disable it so that the, so that the wrecker can't absorb electricity. They're not supposed to destroy it. But uh, Coop just goes into guns blazing anyway and proceeds to destroy the dam, much to her chagrin. And this causes Vegas to lose all of its power, which uh, does wind up does wind up successfully cutting the wrecker off from its main source of power. And uh, with that, Coop is now able to actually kind of sort of maybe fight it, might face off against the wrecker. And uh, and of course, Coop, and of course, Coop then proceeds to actually fight back against it briefly, until unfortunately, Coop accidentally Coop. And this is a very funny gag where, where the button reads, "Do something stupid, please, Coop." The Coop then proceeds to press that button, which causes him to fire an electrical weapon at the wrecker and, and give it full power. And now, at full power, the wrecker is actually able to handle Megas no problem. Um, but to, but despite that, Coop, despite Coop being knocked around a bit, um. Coop, Coop eventually Coop eventually starts using the various um, scale models that are around Vegas. You, if you've been to Vegas, you know the ones. There's like the there's like the Eiffel Tower and the and the casino and the volcanoes and the whole and all the other things that are around that are around Vegas as pro, as props and decorations. Yeah, Coop starts using those to actually start defeating the wrecker, starting with the with the replica Eiffel Tower that is new, that he ha currently has nearby, and uh, and of course ja and of course jams it directly into into the wrecker's chest and uh, starts pounding on it and starts kicking it and. Uh, and this, co and of course, and Kiva remarks that this seems to be working. And uh, eventually, Coop is able to actually successfully defeat the wrecker and proceeds to knock it, knock it into a low vault, into a low volcano thing. With uh, the wrecker declaring that it'll, that it's, that it'll, that it's, that's no use, and that it is indeed, that he is indeed the enemy, and that uh, it will destroy him and everyone, and everyone in order to protect everyone. And uh, Coop, and Coop eventually, and of course. Kiva quickly points out that uh, they're going to need to find a new place to put it, since obviously Area 50, the place where it was contained, is no longer around. And uh, and, and of course, and eventually, Coop has a bit of an idea and figures out the perfect place to actually put it, and then proceeds to bury it in the Nevada desert. And, uh, and of course, Kiva points out that that's actually a pretty brilliant idea, pointing out that obviously, since it's in the middle of the desert and it's buried deep underground, there's no source of electricity for it to get to. So obviously, it's going to be completely completely cut off from anything that could give it power, and eventually, it will shut down and stop trying to destroy things. And uh, and of course, and of course, with 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 another day saved. Coop then, then decides that they should actually go go back to Vegas and go check out the All You Can Eat BFA, which uh, where even though even though Jamie points out the very obvious problem with that is that uh, the convention center was destroyed and the, and the town has no power, but uh, Coop points out that uh, that, that, that not only means that there's not going to be a line and then proceeds to fly off, only for several tourists to actually complain as he does so because as it turns out the thing he used to actually bury the wrecker and keep it from absorbing electricity. Yeah, it turns out he stuck it in the middle of the Grand Canyon and filled the Grand Canyon full of dirt. So now it's no longer a tourist attraction. So, uh, yeah, he basically so and, and then the episode ends with Coop go, actually going to the All You Can Eat buffet, which uh is revealed to be destroyed, and he's just picking clean what's left of it. Um, but in any case, yeah, the episode just kind of ends with Coop just kind of uh, ruining uh, ruining both Las Vegas as well as a national landmark. So, uh, yeah. Again, again, this episode. So again, this reinforces the idea that uh, Coop is a very destructive person, even if he doesn't mean to be. He's just—he's just an idiot. That's it. But uh, 
But uh, yeah, this episode is fun, and that's, uh, well, first and foremost, it, po it spoofs on the very real Area 51, which, uh, a question, which is a re which I should mention is a research and development thing. It is a research and development thing in real life. Um, it do, it isn't a, it is designed to actually research to research technologies that the military can use. But uh, the, the jury's still out on the idea, on the possibility that it may in fact be a place where they actually hold all of the alien tech that they found and all that and all of that kind of stuff. Um, it's not explicitly. I mean, I mean that's the longest. That's probably one of the longest running conspiracy. Nobody really knows what Area 51 has in it. Nobody, nobody knows. It is a top secret facility where the where the military develops all of their weaponry. And of course, nobody has nobody has ever been in there except the military. So of course, so of course, people have started speculating about what kind of things they have behind those behind those impenetrable doors. And that has led people to come come up with a lot of wild conspiracy theories about how they've got captured aliens and stuff and are experimenting on them to create their weaponry. And. Uh, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not entirely sure if that's verifiably true. I mean, there is the possibility of aliens existing in real life. I mean, nobody. I mean, nobody can confirm or deny that. The the the, the, the space is massive. There are, may, I don't know, maybe like quadrillions of planets. There's a lot. There's a lot of, of of possibly inhabited planets across the solar system, and uh, the possibility that there may or may not be intelligent life out there. That's a very real possibility. I mean, none of us, we've never encountered anything else like us, so uh, we, we don't know for sure, but uh, it's, that's definitely a little real possibility. And, and that is something that a lot of that a lot of series have spoofed on, about the possibility that there is indeed uh, something in life elsewhere in the universe. That is a very real thing. And, but uh, I don't think any of it has actually found its way to Earth. That's the big thing. I don't think any of it has. That, if it if it had, then er, then obviously then obviously we would have known. Then obviously somebody would have known about it. Somebody would have seen something. That's a very big thing. But uh, I mean, that's obviously something that you can't really cover up. Obviously, obviously, if aliens suddenly appear on Earth, that's not really something that you can just cover up and make go away. Uh, I mean, that's not. I mean, eventually somebody's going to figure out about it. That's there's not there's not much you can do about that. But uh, more specifically, this episode is also just destroys Las Vegas. That's, that's the main takeaway from this. Uh, that's the main thing from this episode. Um, Coop winds up destroying Las Vegas as well as the as well as the uh, what is it? As well as the, as well as the Grand Canyon. That's how the episode ends. He destroys he destroys both. And also, and also, I feel like I need to bring this up again. Coop just casually has a nuke that he's not allowed to use. So that's a thing that the series will just kind of introduces a plot device and then and then lampshade and then never bring up again. That's very that's a very real thing that Coop has. I, it's that's terrifying. Coop, just, I mean, Coop's established to be an idiot. He's he's established to be a bit of a screw up who occasionally destroys things by accident. Actually, he does that all the time, in fact. But uh, yeah, I, I can very well see a real, very real scenario where Coop accidentally blows something up with, a, with his nuke. I can very well see that. That is something that the series would absolutely do if it wasn't produced, if it hadn't been produced for Cartoon Network. If that is absolutely something they could get away with. Had it been produced for Adult Swim or HBO Max or literally anything else, if it if it had been around at the t if it had been around for HBO Max and uh and and, and Adult Swim, it, it kind of it kind of got it kind of entered production like after uh, any of those were even remotely close to existing. So uh yeah so yeah that is indeed a, that is indeed a real 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 thing if the series does eventually come back though that isn't a, that is definitely something I would see them actually doing at some point for a plot from a plot line in an episode. Coop just accidentally shooting something with his nuke. That's absolutely something I would expect the series to do at some point, when and if it comes back. Of course, of course, there's a bit of a complicated thing, but I'm but I'm getting I'm getting to that. I will bu I'm building to that. I will eventually explain why why Megas kind of went under and is never coming back, or at least is not for a while. So uh, yeah, just put a pin in that. I will eventually explain everything. But uh, in any case, yeah, that's my review of Megas XLR. What did you guys think? Let what did you, let me know in the comment section down below. Or over on my Discord server, link in the description. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Also, be sure to follow me on Twitter in the description below. Um, be sure to check out my Patreon if you want to help support the show. It's only a couple bucks a month. It does really help me out. And you guys get access to a bunch of cool perks down on my way saying thanks. So be sure to check those out. Link is down in the description. And finally, if you want to see more content from me, then be sure to check out what's linked in the end screen. The top video is the most recent video, it may or may not be this one, whereas the bottom link is actually the link to the previous one of these that I did, Courage Month. If you guys if you guys haven't seen it, 
I did a I did a series on on Courage the Cowardly Dog that I've, I've done one of these on Courage the Cowardly Dog. I've done one of these before. This is my second one of these I'm doing, and I would love to do more of them. So if you like so if you like both this one and Courage Month, be sure be sure to continue to support me because I'm planning to do some of these and some more of these in the very near future. I hope you guys will be around for those. But uh, in any case, yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. Until next time, I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.